Hello and welcome back to the tavern. This is my weekly setup for February 2021. For this one, I decided to get a little creative and print out some stickers for my spread, which I made in Photoshop. You will see how I utilize these coming up. Just thought I would insert some delicious Cricut ASMR. And if you watched my February setup video, I mentioned that I made stickers for the tabs that I made. You can see part one of making tabs in that video. I'm just folding them in half right here so that I can, uh, so it's easy for me to adhere. And this is me sticking them on. It was um, a little bit tedious and... Uh, um. I was trying to alternate purple and pink and I was kind of, my mind was somewhere else and I was thinking, man, what if I fucked up and like put two of the same color in a row and the moment after I thought that, I totally did it, so. Yeah. And then I think they turned out pretty good. I like them. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to pull it off or not. And then I just kind of uh, hand wrote in all the little text parts looks pretty cool from uh, the side view. Anyway, here is week one, and I went with Pokemon for week one, and featuring my favorite Pokemon type. And then Haunter is my all-time favorite, followed closely by Pumpkaboo, and Mewtwo, and probably somebody else that I'm um, forgetting. Oh, I like Houndoom. Houndor and Houndoom, I like those guys. They're dark type though. I do like a lot of the dark type Pokemons. Um, you would think that my favorite would be dragon, but not so much. There's not very many dragons that get me very excited. I also like Psychic and Eevee, yes. And here is um, the assembly of these stickers. I should have tried to make them the exact height of um, the dot grid boxes, but I didn't think that far ahead. I just kind of, um, you know, made him the size that would fit. Looking pretty snazzy. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the results, but I think it looks pretty dang cool. And then I'm just using the metallic Posca markers to do kind of a outline, like a stroke, you might call it in Photoshop. Speaking of stroke, when is Procreate gonna have a stroke feature? Come on. People doing all kinds of crazy hacks just to do such a simple feature. Love Cro Procreate, by the way. Highly recommend it. Love the iPad Pro. Pretty cool. And then here I am using my Posca markers to color things in. I'm trying to use this kind of stylized, textured, sketchy look with them because I don't have the broad tip Poscas. If you watch my previous video, you will see that I tried to do this in those drawings as well and how I'm not sure how I feel about it. Sinisty is the best new Pokemon, am I wrong? I love the idea of inanimate objects being possessed by ghosts. Oh, I think it's super neat. That's why I also like Litwick a lot. Um, fuck Rotom. Who cares? He's a fucking dishwasher. 
Wash my dishes, Pokemon. It's not the Flintstones. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? Pokemon's a really good idea, but I just can't get on board with the design. It's Phantom, like the spooky haunted tree Pokemon. I just wish he looked more badass. He just kind of looks lame. Disappointing opportunity missed for my next favorite Pokemon. Every time I try to draw Haunter, I'm just so confused by his design. It's very weird. It's very easy to make him look not cool, but I think I did a pretty good job. I like looking back at early Pokemon art before their designs were completely tied down because you can see the ideas or concepts more clearly. Like, I don't think Haunter is supposed to be a literal purple mask. I think he's more like an intangible, shadowy essence of spooky ghostness. Moving on to week two, we gotta have us some Zelda. Zelda is a pretty big obsession of mine. I basically lived in Ocarina of Time when I was younger. I was talking to some friends about this and we were talking about how we weren't even playing the game. We would just play to role play and that Milan was totally our girlfriends. Lon Lon Milk. I wanted to put even more monsters in the background, but eh. I didn't really leave myself room to do so. Which is for the best. For the best, probably, because it would have taken too long. The monster designs are super different in each game, so I just picked the design that I thought was the coolest slash cutest. Also, you can't go without a cuckoo. Hello. And then I made these little, they're supposed to be like, um, my thought process was that these stickers were like dialogue boxes from each of the games. Oh, feeding my boyfriend. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, so I kind of copied the dialogue boxes from the game and then I added some, in this one in particular, I put the fairies from Link to the Past kind of tiled in the background. And in the Pokemon one, I had a Pumpkaboos. I've always been super fascinated by Ocarina of Time Link's outfit. He has like these shiny, like a shiny onesie under his tunic with like a turtleneck. I just want his hat. How does his hat work? How does it stay on his head? I need this hat. I just read a thing that said that the reason he wears the long underwear white thingy is because he was too handsome and cool and they had to try to like make him more lame so that he fit with the Nintendo aesthetic, but I don't know if that's real or not. To me, his pearlescent tights are just a plus. So these skeleton um, monsters are called bubbles. I don't know why such a um, spooky thing has, a, has such an adorable name. And then the bat guys are called keys. I'm sure there's some kind of explanation for these uh, unique names, but I don't know. So if you know, let me know. All right, Animal Crossing time. So week three, I went with Animal Crossing. If you were like me, you played way too much Animal Crossing at the beginning of the um, pandemic. Um, brought me a lot of joy. It helped me make a lot of friends. I connected with a bunch of people that I had lost touch with, you know, it was like I got to hang out with my friends, even though like we weren't allowed to, and it just was really special, and I'm sure it's really, really special for a, um, a lot of people. I, I, uh, I appreciate you for being there for us, Animal Crossing. I can't even imagine how horribly lonely I would feel if I didn't have you by my side at that time. I do believe I played it to the point where uh, it got kind of unhealthy though. <laughs> but my island looks really cool. I probably stopped playing around August of last year and I'm gonna set my clock back and uh, go through the months. So I don't wanna miss anything. I don't wanna jump back around to where I started already without seeing like the winter months and stuff like that. So these are a few of my villagers and also some of my favorite dudes. Obviously I couldn't fit my whole village in there, but they're all dearly loved. We've got Kiki, naturally. Uh, duh. She's like totally inspired by Kiki's delivery service. There's no way she's not. And then I also had a black cat named Kiki growing up. And so I was pretty thrilled when I first played Animal Crossing and there was a Kiki cat in there. I was like, no way. 
And then Fuchsia looks... Fuchsia is like my... Oh, cake. Fuchsia is like the chick you would like go smoke with or something. Wait, am I allowed to say that? Probably not. Anyways, and then Coco, she is a spooky and uh, lucky. Lucky I have his house in my graveyard. So he's the grave keeper. And Whitney, because we need the woofies in the village. All right, moving on to my avatar spread. This one was kind of tricky to come up with the stickers for because it wasn't a video game. I mean, there is an avatar video game, but I don't know like that that has such an identifiable dialogue box. So I just kind of did some old looking paper with the idea that they were kind of like scrolls, I guess. It was so hard to pick and choose which characters to put here because there's so many good ones. I'm drawing Sokka and I don't know why. I, I feel like I was trying to make his face look more dimensional and then I made these like way too harsh of lines that made him look like really pointy and I had to cover it up with a piece of paper. Freaking Zuko's kimono. I just, I guess I can't draw kimonos. <laughs> there's a couple of kimonos I had to draw for the February set up and I also struggled with those drawings. I was just kind of like copying uh, screenshots I found, but trying to put like a sprinkle of my own style on top of it. I don't know how successful that really was, <laughs> but it did make me realize I need to, or that um, copying screenshots and stuff is pretty um, educational. Like you can learn a lot about your strengths and weaknesses in your own drawings. And like, I realize I need to work on faces more and structure and perspective and everything. But yeah, doing master copies helps put your own art into perspective when you're so used to looking at it all the time or if you're feeling like you're getting stagnant and not progressing. Plus it's good when you're having an art block and don't know what to draw. Anyways, here's the spreads all together and I feel like I was unsure about them individually, but when I flip through the book and see them all together, it makes me really happy. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. I hope you will come back soon to see what I have coming up next for March. March is going to have no drawings in it, so if you are looking for some inspiration and you're someone who doesn't draw, these might be good videos for you because I'm just gonna be using paper, like paper shapes and stickers and I'm doing that because it's quick, easy, and um, what was I gonna say? Quick and easy and it'll help me catch up so that I can do some cool drawings for April and I'm hoping that you'll stick around long enough to see those. Thank you so much again. If you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, say hello in the comments. I will reply. All right, goodbye.